When I was at theater school as an actor, we did a second year exercise, a restoration exercise, and Alan Barlow, who is a designer, and Alan was given the exercise to direct us in, was a restoration play, and he directed us, and it was interesting being directed by a designer, because I began to see the world through a designer's point of view, and he was talking about 18th century, and he started explaining to us that the proportions of the window, the door, the stories in the buildings, were reflective of the human shape. And at that moment, I saw something in the architecture of the time which related then to the costume, which related to me as an actor, as I'm supposed to enter that world. Yes. He made connections to me that I found very fruitful. In terms of physical space and the actor, how do you play that game? With a play like Guys and Dolls, because um, with a project like that, you're less concerned with um, creating an absolutely believable uh, decor each time. Uh, the thing is to frame the musical numbers beautifully uh, and just suggest the rest. Uh, whereas a play like perhaps the one you're doing or uh, God of Carnage, I'll probably refer to that uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, you're, you're more interested that, that the, the the scenography or the uh, the architecture that you're suggesting relate in the way that Alan Barlow was uh, mentioning to you. You see this line running right through here? Mm -hmm. There's a line running through here. Sometimes it's called the dado, sometimes it's called the chair rail, sometimes it's called the, you know, you, 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 see, you see it in, in a lot of uh, interior de decor. And what that does, that line roughly aligns to like about hip height. And so it's an immediate, it's, a, it's the kind of scale that when people walk around in front of that, it's comforting to know that the chair rail or the dado is approximately hip height. And so even before an actor comes on or before there's a piece of furniture in front of that, if the dado is at the right height, you've established something about the scale already. And when you see that, it, it, it always comforts me a little bit to know that someone's thought that through. Do you know what I mean? Instead of, I mean, just to establish a scale, but you do it subconsciously. And that hip height is to meld the actor to the world, the physical world you put them in? or to Well, it isn't. That, I, don't, I don't think that's the purpose of it, but that's an effect that it has. So this is a set for Forehander. It's a modern play. Yes. Set in Paris. And this is set in Paris, yes? yes. It's a uh, Well, in New York. <clears throat> moved to New York. But right. it's basically a acid comedy about two couples. Yes. And so this is what you would put behind them to do... Why the height? It's tall because... Um, I'm going, what do I need to make this, uh, what can I do here to make this uh, play seem uh, visually to have a kind of interest beyond the naturalistic? Because uh, in the Roman Polanski movie, if, I don't know if you've seen it or anything, but the, the decors are perfectly normal. I mean, it's, uh, sh it's shot in these people's apartment and it's wonderful and uh, you know uh, it's totally realistic all the books are real everything and you can certainly do it on the stage that way too but I'm thinking what element can I bring to this to make it slightly more um, to give it another dimension than just that so I thought gee there's a point in the play from it's about from when she vomits in the play when the tensions start to ratchet up, you know what I mean? So, or, or they heighten, if you like, you know? And so I'm thinking like, if the play starts and, and I have a border in, black border, to about this height, that's kind of like a normal height for a, a room, if you like. And as soon as she vomits, this starts to move up that real slow. <laughs> they found they did a gear, you know, geared down, and so that I don't know how many revolutions to make it move an inch. You know what I mean? So it moved up imperceptibly until 
at the end of the play, it was as high as I could possibly go. And how long did that take to gear up? That took about 45 minutes. And how long, in the gearing, how long did that, did you time that rise? The, it happened over about 45 minutes and it didn't reach its full height until the very, practically the very end of the play. So in theory, the audience is actually not supposed to notice it moving? Well, they weren't supposed to, you know. And funnily enough, a lot of people came out of that show. <clears throat> and they, I mean, I saw them, friends of mine and stuff. Uh, say, gee, great set, Michael. It's wonderful looking, la, la, la. And I said, um, I said, did you notice that it got higher? I was anxious <laughs> for people to, to know. And they say, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't notice it got higher, but just at the end of the curtain call, I'm looking, I'm saying, gee, there are a lot of bookshelves there, you know? <laughs> so, so, but some people did see it happen. And I, what we did is we went r up to the very, almost the very top. And then when it got to the very top, we did this cue called the snatch, it was called, in which they just snatched the border out for the last, like about 18 inches, it just snatched out. And some people just missed that. They just completely missed it. But it's as if you're changing the lens by which the audience sees the actor in their sorta, world. Sort of, yeah. You're changing the lens and you're not telling them. And they're... That's right, that's right. Yeah. So the image got taller and taller. So it became it became a perfect square, whereas it started out as a rectangle. And it's, it's a similar device to the one you described in Copenhagen in a way. Right. It was like taking a rectangular thing and just extending it like that. And, and so what emotionally did you want from that? It just struck me that the, uh, that the action uh, become, became um, more and more heightened and in a sense more, like, more theatrical and in a sense more artificial too. So I thought it was just a device that I, I came up with and thought I might lend it to this to possibly increase that, uh, the potential of the play to, to develop over that kind of trajectory, you know what I'm saying? So for no other re reason than that. Luckily, the director liked uh, liked the idea a lot, except t towards the opening at the, one of the tech rehearsals, and he said, "Gee, we're we're really imposing quite a thing on this play here." But I said, "You know, whatever we do to it, uh, whatever actors you pick, whatever, we're imposing ourselves on the play all the time to interpret the play. So why should a little thing like that? You know what I'm saying? Like." Now, did you tell the actors about this, or was it any of their business to know? I did, uh, especially well, at the, sh you know, when you start rehearsals, when you have the show and tell. Uh, I had the maquette, you know, I, it was all lit and everything beautiful, you know what I mean? And I explained to them how it would happen. And that's why I made these two, two borders here, right? So I could view them in the, I didn't stand there for 45 minutes and do that but I used two different heights and explained to them what was going to happen. 